What's up? This is Morgan from Kitty, and you're watching BareBonesMusic.com. <sighs> Evil G, barebonesmusic.com. I am here with Morgan Lander from Kitty. several lineup changes yes <laughs> other than you and your sister yes and right now your lineup is pretty seems pretty stable yes definitely how let's get right into that and how how's the chemistry right now with within the band playing live how are you guys oh. vibing gelling together as a group do you mean do you feel cohesive as oh yeah definitely now? things I are mean, things are really really good actually um i think uh obviously in the black is a product of a band that has great chemistry um, it seems like it's a more focused album, I think, because of that. Um, you know, we're great friends. We get along. Um, we've been playing together long enough in this particular lineup that I think we sort of, you know, know what each other's next move is going to be. Mm -hmm. And that helps to keep, you know, the flow going. Um, Tara's been in the band for five years now. And uh, Ivy's been in the band for three. So, and, you know, we've all done multiple tours and... And uh, Tara's done two albums with us now, so I mean, it's it's all good. So this this was the unit that actually recorded in, in yes, the block. Yes, okay. yes, definitely. So, good. Now I want to get to your videos because I I did a little research on this and I saw that Cutthroat mm -hmm. was one of the most popular songs off your off your album, um, and Sorrow I Know mm -hmm. you shot, in, yeah, back to back yes. in two days. Yes, I remember the pain. <laughs> what was the thought process behind that? Why was that such a um well. Our record label is based in New York City, mm -hmm. and when we were um, we were heading down there to do the videos, we figured if we're going to be in one place where we need to get multiple things done, we might as well just get it all done. And actually that weekend was the album cover uh, and press photo shoot, which mm -hmm. lasted 12 hours. <laughs> then the next day we got up and did the uh, cutthroat video. All right. Which lasted all day as well. You know, it's like 5 a.m. makeup calls, all that kind of fun stuff when you're a girl. I got up, you know. Right. <laughs> um, and then the next day was the Sorrow I Know video. So I think we probably had a total of like eight hours of sleep over the whole weekend. And um, But it made sense because we were going to be in New York and all of the locations that we were filming and stuff right. uh, were all very, you know, close together. And um, we just thought it was a good idea. It was all, it was a lot of work, but mm. it was fun. And then you have the two versions of the video, yep. mm -hmm. uh, the Too Hot for TV yes. mm. and your clean version. Yes. And I watched both of them. Is there a reason that was like too hot or people wouldn't touch it because of the scene? And I'll, I'll spell it out yeah. if people haven't seen it, mm -hmm. that there's attempted rape yeah. and murder yep. within the context of you guys playing this gigantic ballroom, yeah. all these people in these elaborate gowns. Yeah. I mean, how did, how did that like... I mean, I guess nowadays, especially with music videos, I don't know, there seems to be like, a, you know, a, a particular standard, like you're not allowed to have certain things, especially mm -hmm. MTV, you know, they try to stay away from a lot of things. But at the same time, you know, they will also like play a rap video with half naked women in it and right. that sort of thing. Um, I guess for us, we were just trying to, you know, illustrate, you know, I guess an emotion that was kind of coming from the song with right. that particular version. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, we just we just wanted to do something kind of different. Uh, third video from the record coming yes, soon. Yes, yes, they're actually Any inside oh secrets. God, it's a milestone. <laughs> we have never ever had more than two videos uh, on an album. Um, so yes, we are filming a video for. Actually, I probably won't want to release the name yet, but okay. we're gonna have another single. Okay. We're shooting it in May before we head out on another tour, um, and we sort of have the concept already, and it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be wicked. All right, well, I'm very stoked. I heard it here first. When you recorded in the black, did mm -hmm. you seem to have a lot more creative control yes. over what you were doing? Mm -hmm. What was that like? Did you have a different approach to that album um, versus Funeral? Um, oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, no. Based we, on what happened in the past, yeah, and yeah. now that you're with E1. I yeah. Mean, um, with this album, we definitely wanted to have a different approach. And when we went to record, we were free agents. 
Um, and so we went into the studio uh, with basically the thought that we wanted to make uh, the most raw, aggressive album that we've recorded in 10 years and really just kind of get back to basics with things um, and just kind of take that, you know, live off the floor-ish kind of approach and, and just really capture what we do live and what we truly sound like because I think sometimes um, who we are and what we really sound like gets lost in the mix and like, you know, with albums like Funeral for Yesterday or even Until the End, I think sometimes it doesn't really capture what we're all about. Um, so that's kind of what we set out to do. And we wanted to make it over the top, you know, like really loud and raw, lots of solos, really fast, and, and just uh, I think we accomplished what we set out to do, I think. Now Tara's been in the band with you for five years. Mm -hmm. um, how do you guys complement each other as guitar players? Oh, we and honestly... And how, how does it affect your writing? I oh, mean, yeah, okay. Um, honestly, Tara and I are like night and day. Um, she's definitely more of the... Um, technical kind of guitar player. She is very influenced by like Stevie Ray Vaughan, a lot of blues and jazz. Um, her style is, is a lot more, I would say, classic rock. Mm -hmm. And when she came into the band, she sort of had to adapt to the like the metal picking style and that sort of thing, where that's where my forte is. And I'm mm -hmm. not really so much a solo player. Or... When we write together, it it's like a perfect mixture of, of technical and um, you know, a little bit of soul and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. and metal. Um, like for me, I'm just, you know, I pride myself in being, you know, a solid rhythm player. You know, I'm singing and that sort of thing. So I, uh, that's just what I do. I just, I think I do it well. I got a fast, fast hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you got songs on, on In the Black. I've been listening to the album and yeah, it's metal and it's heavy and you've got your screaming and you've got mm -hmm. your singing, but I have heard in the past mm -hmm. that it's you. It takes more focus for you to sing yeah. versus scream mm -hmm. with your voice. Yes. Talk, tell me a little bit. I mean, how, wow. Um, I well, mean, I know it's probably difficult, regardless. But yeah. Well, I mean, I, explaining you know what I do is is hard. But like for me, singing um, is something I've had to work on. Mm -hmm. um, the screaming aspect of things. Like when I first started the, uh, in the band. It was more about knowing that I could convey an emotion more so than I knew that I could scream and do it well and properly because there is a certain technique to do it and to not lose your voice. Right. Um, but I've ha definitely had to work on becoming a singer and actually um, you know, hitting notes and being good because <laughs> um, when we first started, I definitely was not. And I think a lot of it has to do with confidence as well. Mm -hmm. Because like I can remember, like I could sing in my bedroom and sing well or whatever, right. but it's like when we were so young, you know, I, and I'd never been out in front of a, an audience before. And now, I mean, we've been touring for 10 years and it's just, I've developed a, you know, an appropriate technique and I'm not like Mariah Carey or anything. I'm not like right. amazing, but I can get the job done. And, um, it's just something that I've had to focus and concentrate on a little more. The, the screaming stuff is, it comes very, very easy to me. When we started the band, I was 14 and Mercedes was 12. Okay. I mean, and when we were signed, uh, I was, I think 17 or 18. So how have you matured? I mean, what's this maturity oh, process God. been like over the past 10 years? It's crazy. I, mean, I, I feel like we've um, uh, personally yeah. grown up in public uh, and musically as well. I mean, when we started, we were playing very, very age appropriate music. Like we wrote those songs when we were 13. It's, it's really weird. It's hard to look back at um, all that we've done, especially, you know, like our first album and even relate, mm -hmm. you know, to th that person that I was just because, you know, 10 years on, well, I mean, 14 years on since a lot of those songs were written, you know, I'm a completely different person. I've had different experiences and I think we've grown up to be pretty decent, okay human beings, <laughs> I, I, I hope. I mean, we've definitely been through a lot of stuff and, and a lot of people wouldn't have come out on the other side okay. Right. I don't know. I think we, our parents did a really good job for Mercedes and I uh, did a really good job of raising us and making sure that we weren't too crazy and so you had a great we must have a very very supportive family yeah and, yeah definitely and 12 and 14 years old and starting yes, your yes, metal band yes my mom <laughs> thought we were crazy but she went along with it and you know she's she still supports us and she's you know manages part manager of the band and stuff too so oh, awesome. it's good yeah!